We have a swimming pool, and we're given the area of that pool, and we're in the first part of the problem, part A, asks us to find two different things, the total force on the bottom of the pool, and the absolute pressure. Now first off, recall that the force due to a pressure is equal to the magnitude of that pressure, multiplied by the surface area over which it acts. In the case of our problem, that area is going to be the area of the pool, and that pressure is going to be the absolute pressure. So even though part A of the problem is asking us to find two different things at once, we need to find the pressure first. Now an important key thing to notice is that the problem is specifically asking about absolute pressure. Now recall that the pressure due to a change in height, or a change in depth of a fluid, is equal to the density of the fluid multiplied by the gravitational acceleration g multiplied by the depth of that fluid. That is what the formula is for the gauge pressure. But if we're talking about absolute pressure, then the, at then the atmospheric pressure, the pressure from the atmosphere, must be considered as well. So the absolute pressure is going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the rho g h term. So now let's find the absolute pressure by taking in the numbers that we were given in the problem. Now recall that atmospheric pressure has a value of 1.013 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per meter squared. And then we're adding on the other values that were given to us. So we're talking about a swimming pool, so the density is going to be 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter multiplied by the gravitational acceleration, 9.81 meters per second squared, multiplied by the depth of the, of the pool, the depth into the water, which is 1.8 meters. Yeah. So if we put that into a calculator, then we find a pressure of about 1.189 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per meter squared. So that is our answer for the absolute pressure at the bottom of the pool. But now that we know that pressure, we can use it to find the total force at the bottom of the pool due to that pressure. So as we mentioned earlier, the force is equal to the pressure times the surface area. So we'll just take the pressure we just found and multiply it by the surface area of the bottom of the pool. So the force is equal to 1.189 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per meter squared. And then we multiply this by the dimensions of the bottom of the pool, which is 28 meters by 8.5 meters. So that's 28 multiplied by 8.5. And so we put this into a calculator, and we find a force of 2.8 times 10 to the power of 7 newtons. And so this is the total force at the bottom of the pool. Now, part B of the problem asks, what will the pressure be against the side of the pool near the bottom? So it's not asking about the pressure on a specific surface or over a specific area, but just against the side of the pool at the lowest depth. Now, it might seem like we're not given enough information to work with, but really, this is actually a good example of a problem that tests your conceptual knowledge of fluids, and, and just pressure in general, because an important thing to understand about pressure is that pressure is not directional. At a certain depth, of, at a certain depth within a fluid, the pressure is the same, has the same value in all directions. So if we're looking at the pool, we, we, we established a moment ago that at the depth of 1.8 meters, this is the pressure. That means that anywhere at that depth, the pressure is, has the same value in all directions. So even against the side of the pool, the pressure still has the exact same value of 1.189 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons per meter squared. And so that is our answer to both parts of the problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that will help me out in making more videos just like this. And if you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below. Hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.